In my previous videos, I introduced the magnificent code system involving the world's pyramids, mounds, maps, and numbers. It all ran the spectrum from simplicity to apparent confusion, as it was supposed to. No one can design a top-secret communication system and leave it right out in the open for everyone to see and trip over unless it is carefully arranged to confuse the undisciplined mind. And the key to that was numbers. Why numbers? Because most people don't like them and prefer to avoid them. Even worse, the undisciplined mind can assert meanings to numbers that can look logical but be something else. And it does happen. For example, from the ancient science of geometria come a host of well-organized rational numbers, sacred numbers, which few people understand. A few are shown here. For example, 144 and 432, the 432 being three times 144. Other of these numbers, such as 54, 96, or 2160, while they are often considered sacred, are not geometrian. But when one looks closely, all of these numbers can be found. For example, one of these Gematrian holy numbers, 144, was used in the grid positioning of certain pyramids, among them the Bent Pyramid of Seneferu Dasher and the smaller El Kula Pyramid, both of which are in Egypt. But why? Presently unknown. Although Geomatrian scholars are unanimous in their beliefs that the number 144 means light. Again, why? If the El Kula and Bent Pyramids do represent light, why don't they light up for us? Or at least glow? Where is the switch that turns them on? A frequency, perhaps? A musical note? Maybe from a trumpet or a host of trumpets? What will it take to prove the Geomatrians' theories or belief systems? Or to disprove them? Even the higher Geomatrian number of 432 was used in the pyramid grid system, its representative being the so-called false pyramid at Medum, Egypt. It is called false because it isn't all there anymore, apparently having collapsed because its outer casing stones lie in a heap of rubble at its base. Why? Faulty construction techniques? That I will never believe. More likely it was something else. Something probably deliberate. If frequency and vibration are somehow representative of Gematrian numbers, it might have been a sustained musical note that shook this pyramid apart, you know, like the frequency that tore the Tacoma Narrows Bridge apart about a half century ago. Wow. If that's the case, then it was probably a good idea to have established our standard A note in music at 440 vibrations per second rather than 432. There's no telling what our loud rap music might have been able to do to these ancient monuments. On the other hand, there are many levels to the code, and any numbers it uses could, and frequently do, have multiple meanings and intent and may not be what some folks think they should be. Another anciently used number was 96. Considered sacred to some, it is not Geomatrian, but it was used on one of the pyramids at Tikal in Guatemala. This one is known as Temple One, the Temple of the Giant Jaguar. It is taller than it is wide at its base. Steeper are its sides than any pyramid ever built in Egypt. 
and on its face or facade are 96 steps. What do they mean? Nothing apparent, even to a number cruncher, unless multiplied by some other number. Hence, they can be made to say almost anything we want them to, according to one's belief system or imagination. But in order to find the intended meaning of Temple One's 96, we must get into the architect's mind. How do we do that today? He's been dead for centuries. We'll have to study his pyramid logic and that of the global matrix to which he was responsible. Now here's the kicker. Once we do that properly, the pyramids of the global matrix system become as the individual pages of an encyclopedia. And its first chapter deals with Earth history. One third of the way around the Earth to the west of the Giza Prime Meridian is the original 120th Meridian. Between it and the 121st Meridian are a number of Aboriginal pyramid sites, ranging from the far north down into Central America. They include Rock Lakes Pyramids in Wisconsin, Uxmal in Mexico, Tikal in Guatemala, Copan in Honduras. Of this group, the largest of the pyramids involved are those at Tikal, including Temple One. The most unusual site within this narrow band is Rock Lake and its several submerged pyramids. Now why would someone, anyone, bother building stone pyramids in a natural depression and, upon completing them, deliberately flood the site with the water that makes up modern Rock Lake? unless they are trying to explain something to us, which we're unable to see or find. Notice that the code's grid latitudes for both Rock Lake's Delta Mound and Tikal's Temple One are identical, 2788.548. Rock Lake's Delta Mound, then, is referring the investigator directly to Temple One. Something in or on Temple One is somehow significant to an as yet unclear scenario. But what is it? Pay close attention to the code's logic here. Rock Lake's pyramids are all submerged and therefore difficult to investigate. Such work requires scuba gear. Tikal, conversely, is high and dry and easily studied. Does this combination of Rock Lake and Tikal provide certain data toward the rediscovery of some other submerged ancient site somewhere? And if so, where is it? It's in the west, in the direction the Temple One faces at Tikal. West to the Pacific Ocean, Hawaii, Japan, and beyond. But what's out there? Those 96 steps on its facade will explain. They face westward, the long way back to the prime meridian at Giza. So take the problem to Giza and from there come back eastward from Giza, a total of 96 meridians to the Ryukyu Islands southwest of Japan. On our modern maps that would be 127 degrees east of Greenwich, but that doesn't concern us here. It is right here, at 96 degrees and 45 minutes to the east of Giza, where scuba divers have recently found temples submerged beneath the waters of the Pacific Ocean. The 96 steps on Temple One's westward-facing facade then directly convert to meridians. They weren't just numbers to crunch, they have deliberate meaning. Yet why do these Lemurian ruins go over to 96 degrees 45 minutes? Why not exactly 96 degrees as Temple One steps indicate? 
Tikal itself was not built at exactly 120 degrees West Giza longitude. It is found at 120 degrees and 45 minutes. Temple 1's 96 steps show us the 96 degrees position of Okinawa submerged ruins. Tikal itself explains the 45 minutes. A simple scenario, what? Tikal's Temple 1, high and dry, taps the logic from Rock Lake submerged pyramids and transmits it westward in the direction it faces to explain where to find those submerged ruins off Okinawa. Magnificent. So if we ever wish to find the fabled lost continents of the past, well, now we know how it's done. <laughs>